Hi, I'm Jason with Unmatched Style. I'm going to take five minutes of your time today and talk about QUnit. QUnit is a sub-project of jQuery. Of course, jQuery needs no introduction. You can go right to it. If you go to the documentation, uh, you're not going to find QUnit on the menu here. They actually don't list it for whatever reason. But it certainly is helpful. Um, you just search for QUnit. QUnit API reference will come up. You see, for any test-driven developers out there, um, you see this, this example will make plenty of sense to you. Uh, simple tests, modules that uh, categorize tests together, and assertions like OK and equals. Uh, the full reference is down here at the bottom. You have test, async test, expect, module, etc. You also have start and stop. This helps with asynchronous tests that have to run. You can stop the execution of JavaScript to wait for an AJAX call to come back. And that timeout is specified in milliseconds. Uh, milliseconds you want JavaScript to wait uh, for the response to come back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the source of their example and we're going to modify it slightly uh, so that we can play with it. Uh, first let's just get this running. It's a pretty good example. Shows a couple tests. Um, save that. I already have it open here. I'm going to take a look at that. We have a couple modules that they've specified. Uh, a basic test example. Module A, uh, module A again, um, second test within that same module. And they also have a failing test here. Um, I suppose we can mess with that, but we're going to go ahead and dump all of their tests. We're going to write our own tests. Um, first, let's fix their indentation. Their indentation is um, less than good. Now, you see here at the top of our file, we have two script tags jQuery, the latest jQuery being pulled in from jQuery.com, and we also have QUnit being pulled directly from GitHub. Uh, we also have the QUnit CSS file, which is also being pulled in from GitHub. Um, those are the only three files. Uh, I guess, really, if you don't want it to look very good, you could remove the CSS file, but the two JavaScript files are, of course, uh, required. Now, let's write our first test. Uh, the syntax for this, uh, or the format for this, is the name of the test and then the test you want to run. You just pass it in in a callback fashion like this. Uh, let's call it something. Our first test with QUnit. QUnit? No. Okay, so our first test is going to be something very simple. We're just going to check the sanity of a true statement. This should always be fine. Now if we go back to our tests in our browser here, we see our first test is fine. Now this is fairly trivial. Uh, let's actually do a little test-driven development. Uh, we want to write a function that will calculate a value. So calc a value is our function. Uh, this first expression always has to evaluate to true. So if calc a value uh, returns, say, the number 42, we want to test for that. Um, this should always return 42. Well, it's a pretty poorly worded test. Uh, function should always return 42. Whatever. That's good enough for now. Let's not forget our semicolon. Now, this should fail, say, if we just add the name of the function or just define the function. Var calc a value equals function, and let's not have it return anything. Uh, this should be read. It should fail. Now this is the sort of mantra of test-driven development. Uh, red, green, refactor. So here we are at red. We want to make this green. We've defined our test. We've defined our function. Our test is failing because our function hasn't been implemented yet. Let's implement the function. Now if we just do return 40 plus 2 that should be green. Good. Everything everything passed. Uh, zero tests failed. Two tests passed. Two tests run. Uh, those are the numbers that we're seeing there. Now let's change it up a little bit. Let's add some complexity. What if uh, we wanted to add a parameter that we could pass and we want the function to return that value that we've passed as its result? Uh, so let's say 52. 
but that's only when we pass it a ver uh, pass it uh, an argument function should return its argument as its value so not forget our semicolon again now let's say if there's an argument return the argument simple enough this should pass as well good three tests run three tests passed uh, and this is a very simple introduction to QUnit, QUnit. Uh, there are also interesting ports of QUnit to things like Node.js. Uh, Node you might want to look into that. Um, but otherwise, there is our brilliant introduction to QUnit. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching.